I just wanted to talk about Tupi. Now, when I say that, don't don't worry, I don't mean the whole process or anything like that. It's just more of a reminder. Um, if uh-huh. you currently outsource any of your departments, so for example, F and B is is the popular one. If you have someone who is not performing, make sure you go back to who's providing that contract and sort it out or ask for a replacement. And I say that because if you ever want to then bring your catering in-house or you want to go to a new service provider, those employees will chupy transfer over. Um, and we break a lot of people's hearts when we tell them that, when we get that email in saying, we're bringing, you know, we're, we're, we're going to serve notice on the contract and bring catering in-house. And we say, oh, that means all the staff that, you know, they're chupying to you and they say, oh, but we don't want person X, they're rubbish, they've not performed for years. And yeah, we have to break their hearts. So if you have a runner who's not performing, sort it out with your contract vendor. Worst case, they send a replacement and they keep doing it until you're satisfied with their service because there might be a time that that, trans- that employee transfers to you and then they're down to you to manage and they've probably got more than two years service then as well. Um, but yeah, if you ever think you're in a chupy situation, let us know because some of them are obvious and some are not so obvious. So if you ever are unsure, ping us an email and, and we can have a look for you. Um, and then Aim is just going to talk to you about a probation case today and then we'll move on to our question and answers. Hello, everyone. So yeah, like Catherine says, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about probations today. Um, So this week I had a call from a client to talk about one of their greenkeepers. Um, He had a lot going on in his personal life, but there were some concerns as well um, with his performance and with his conduct. Um, His performance wasn't great. He's still in his probation period. Um, And then we started talking about health and safety. Now, there were a couple of examples that I was given uh, where there had been some serious breaches of health and safety, including one where the employee had actually put the mower in his control and then put his feet up and just let it carry on. Um, Now, the client was very sympathetic to the employees. Obviously, what was going on in his personal life, he had a lot of pressure on him and he was very sympathetic to that Um, and actually talked about extending probation. Now, the key thing here is that for the probation period is the perfect time that you can really understand whether an employee is going to fit in with your business, is going to fit in with the role and is going to deliver what you need from them. It was very clear from what I was being told that this employee was not was not doing what they needed to do, was not performing in the way that they needed to perform and had breached health and safety in quite a considerable and dangerous way. Um, and in this case, extending probation uh-huh. anyone, it doesn't help the employee and it certainly does not help you um, as an employer. Um, so in this case, we decided that the best thing to do would to terminate his employment um, and based on a probation fail due to the reasons I talked about. So just a little reminder, really, really important, use the probation periods to test out your employees, make sure they are fitting in with your business or with your club. Um, And if they're not suitable and they're not right, your best bet is to terminate them and look for someone that will fit in with your team. And we've we've often spoke about being too nice. And when Amy gave me the example of health and safety, it's like, okay, you might be going for a tough time at home. I can't see how that relates to you putting your feet up that when Amy said health and safety, I thought maybe they're forgetting to do checks because their mind is preoccupied. This is just uh, malpractice, isn't it? So uh, it's always that line of being too nice again. Try not. <laughs> the cynical me says, try not to be too nice. A little bit nice, but not too much. Um, so, yes, we will hand over to any questions you may have now on, on any HR topic. Just jump straight in. Oh, it's the... I, uh, I pull quick- Big yep. one for me. Sorry, um, I've we obviously use agencies for our um, some chefs and our kitchen porters. Now, in a past uh, past employer, we used to ask the agency to sign a document just stating that they'd done their right to work checks. Um, we don't do it here at the moment, but is that something you feel that should be in place? No, if if the, an agency staff, the agency is their employer. Yes. So they should have all the checks before they come to you. If you have any doubts, you can ask to see that check. But ultimately, if you go for an agency, because I'm, I'm going to assume pay slips again, you pay the agency who pay them. Yeah, yeah. So the agency is the employer. You're okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you. Dawn, any questions? No. 
We want to go enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> Got a couple of days left. Probably rain at the weekend. Um, Paul, I put you on mute. Um, but if you have a question, take yourself off mute. There's too much happiness in the background. That's why I put you on mute. That's all right. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> I heard some laugh and I thought, oh, I can't have that. <laughs> oh, was that us? Is it? Sorry about that. that was it. Um, sorry, my first time I signed into. I'm sorry you can't see my video. I've been playing around with it to see if I can um, somehow get my view but uh, anyway first time i've joined you on this is this about the normal sort of um how many people do you have on these sort of chats regularly because i've not signed in before yeah uh very it very really rare it varies we can't tell week to week so the, the weather's nice we tend to have less people <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. um or if we do a special so it's normally a small group i would say you know, we're not going to get 100 so mm -hmm. you can have proper chats um yeah, nice. so yeah i would say a, a nice small group we're smaller today we have some regulars who aren't here who are on hold holiday yeah but yeah you're, you're never going to be stuck in a massive queue of 100 waiting to get in and we're in a nice confidential group i would imagine so yes. i mean is on okay um i signed in because i was making contact um i've been here six months i've not had to use um and i've got a, a lot of hotel background so i've done a lot of employment law stuff in my career um and so there's a bit of background knowledge. I, I know how to sort of, uh, you know, document meetings and things like that, make sure that I, I cover things from an employee employer point of view. One of the things that's come up recently, I'm about to change contracts for the greenkeepers. Um, and I've had some chats with them. They have been um, set up with my previous managers on a 40 hour week and been paid for a 40 hour week all four of them yeah and all four of them are actually working a 35 hour week <laughs> okay which um i found out by a little bit of investigation work and then on top of that you know i mean uh, everything is in fantastic shape on the golf course it's really difficult to criticize any um performance but on top of that, at a weekend, if they come in and work the weekend, um, I get charged or the club gets charged double double time on a Sunday, time and a half on a Saturday. Yeah. So I've had them in and I just said, listen, um, this is not any of I don't know if it's really any of their fault, but I um I can't prove that. So I've gone, look, it's you you're in the circumstances, you've had this for an uh, you know, I can see a minimum of three years. The way I see it, you've been bonus paid some of the fight, like something like six grand a year each. I think that and the overtime has probably cost the club over twenty thousand pounds last year. Okay. So I'm thinking to myself, right, I've got to give them some options because I can't carry on like yeah. this. The, the, the perform the business performance of the club is is reflects that. So I need to change things. So I'm just going to lay things out for them. I'm either looking for a forty hour. 40 hour week and we'll talk about the projects that we're going to be able to complete and enhance the course in those extra 20 hours a week or i'm going to give them an option to decrease their to continue with their 35 hour week and decrease their pay accordingly yes that's how i see things and i'm going to set that out in a new contract and get them to try, to try and sign sign it I'm sorry for the garbled message there, but hopefully you'll okay. understand yeah. that, um, um, what I'm trying would, to say. Yeah, I would say that hours is your easiest one here. Like you said, if the contract says 40, but they're working at 35, mm. then they either work 35 and are paid for 35, or they work 40. Exactly. So that, that to me isn't actually... If they're opting for the 35, there is a contract change. If they're staying as 40, that's not a contract change because they should have been doing that anyway. Yes. The bit that's probably more sticky is the overtime at the weekends. Does it stipulate in their contract that they get enhanced pay? Yes, it does. Okay. You're yeah. going to have a challenge with this one. Okay. Um, so to change anyone's contractual terms, you need to consult with them, which basically means you need to get their agreement. Yes. Now, the only way they're going to agree to give up overtime, etc., is probably if you offer something in return mm. that's going to be of value to them. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a salary increase or an extra benefit, for example. Okay. Um, so in terms of the overtime, you can't enforce this. You have to consult with them, explain why you are making the change, 
Mm -hmm. uh, give a proposed effective date, for example, a month's time, listen to their feedback, any questions. You, if they happy, they agree. Great. New contract, sign it. I don't think it's going to be as easy as that. You sure. then probably enter into a period of negotiation. So we're not going to pay overtime for weekends, but we've worked out on average that equates to X amount a year. So you'll get an X amount pay increase, for example, or nice. we'll give you some extra holidays, something like that to try and get them to agree to it. Ultimately, you can't change it unless they agree to it. Yeah. So you're going to have a bit of a called. challenge. If they were to go to a 40 hour contract and then work the weekend, I was going to give them time off in lieu for everything yep. they did over and above. Um, basically, your contract is your contract, whatever hours that is, anything over and above, I will give you time off in lieu for. But I was also thinking if they work a five, hour, a five day week and then work the weekend, I could pay them a, you know, just their just the hourly rate for the weekend. So it still comes as a sort of overtime, but it's yeah. just not at time and a half or double time, which is yeah. stipulated in the contract as it is. Yeah, I would so um, I probably much. say send us would like, send us a copy of the contract because I what I want to look at is, yes, it says about overtime, double time, but your working hours, does it actually have weekends in there? So there's mm. a couple of things to look at to see what you need to change. But But, yes, ultimately, you can give them the options – but they're not going to want to be a detriment here. So if they're missing out on overtime, they're not going to agree to that. So you'll probably have to negotiate, give them we'll something in return. in some way. Yeah. Or if you absolutely fail at that, you keep them as they are. But any obviously new starters, you can then change that overtime isn't sure. paid. It's time off in new, for example. Um, sure. If you get nowhere with a negotiation, you then might need to look into doing a restructure. But we're, we're, we'll park that one for now try and get them to agree but i would say in the first instance send us through your contract and we can just take a look and see if there's anything there that might help you some wording there that might help you okay that sounds good that sounds good sorry for everybody listening in i just that's, okay. um, that's what it's for um, honestly that's what this forum is for because you're probably going to face those situations like you did dawn and lorraine changing contract terms etc yeah. so well, in interesting, with my hotel background, I just inherited a lot of HR issues. I mean, I've, um, you know, I go into the personnel files and it's incomplete and old, old, um, you know, the club's been run like the early 1900s for a while and um, just trying to bring it into this century, really. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I mean, things like, um, what, you know, working time regulations, I, I, I've had every member of staff. Now, now, there's only 15 or 16 of us on the payroll, if you like, and um, they are no, – no one completed a timesheet until I, the day when I started. So I was very popular on first on the first day when I – and I said, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll pay you for what you work, but I need to know what you work. How about that? <laughs> so it's been quite fun putting the principles back in place. So, um, but yeah, this is a real, this is a real one. This, this 35 hour, 40 hour thing, the glowingly obvious, uh, errors in the mismanagement, um, from before I started. So I just really want to address this head on and, yeah. and, um, you know, I, they're producing a great golf course in 35 hours a week think, thinking what I could they could do in the time that I pay them for <laughs> yeah exactly try try the um the consultation and changing the contract if that doesn't work mm. your second option then is a restructure so yeah. in the greens this is the total hours we need so all of them go for redundancy process it's yeah. you're, you're you're on a 30 hour contract hour or 35 hour there are ways to do it i um, have actually brought that up in a i've had two consultations with them i've been very open and honest about the situation and where we are why i need to do things um how lucky they've been for three years and um and also i've i've mentioned the dreaded r word which um mm -hmm. i have absolutely <laughs> no plans to impose um but uh, it does underline the seriousness of the situation yeah, um yeah. and that that certainly sent the got the right response anyway so okay yeah. great and, and great stuff ultimately if this is a pay issue so if that contract does say 40 and they've only worked 35 mm -hmm. um 
I know you're not going to do it, but like a, a an incentive to get them to agree to this new contract is you can reclaim that money. It's an overpayment. We'd have to do it in a store. I mentioned that back, as well, but... only because I was pushed by yeah. one guy in the in the group, um, and I said, "Well, of course, I could I could get you to repay what we've overpaid you, which I have record of." Yeah. And um, yeah, that sort of um, that muted that point pretty quickly as well. So <laughs> it yeah, it's been a, a bit of fun. Room. But they're doing, they're doing a fantastic. <laughs> I mean, oh, they're doing a fantastic job and trying to separate that um issue with them as like performance wise i've got no issue at all I'm, I'm, our our golf course is getting some incredible reviews right now we've 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 um, we've done really really well so i'm um, in one hand i'm really praising them and the performance but in the on the in the other hand, on the other hand there's just such a reality to this situation yeah Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So thanks for Thank listening, you. everyone, and, and and talking it through. That's really helpful for me. Thank you. Okay. Um, any more questions before we wrap up? I might leave my other ones for a future meeting so that I don't <laughs> send them back to the sunshine. No problem. And you can always email us in as well. Um, okay. Lovely. Uh, well, I know it's only Thursday, but I wish you a happy weekend now because it's not too long away. Long may the sunshine continue. Um, and yes, we will speak to you next week. Thank you. Thanks very much, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you want a free tribunal audit of your employment contract and handbook, click the link in the description below.